welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some best of one action. We got a fifth deck today. We got a, a late donation. It's still a little early here. We're going to get some bonus magic in for y'all. This deck's a best of one deck. Uh, it's called Esper Gods um, because we have God Eternal, God Eternal Kefnet, I suppose. Um, which Kefnet's just awesome, right? Like we've we've been having so much success with this card. This card is just awesome. And in in this deck, we have like regular Esper Control stuff, which Esper Control is maybe the best deck in the best of one format. So I'm expecting to do pretty well here with this deck. We got all sorts of good cards. Mastermind's Acquisition is a card that you see a lot more best of one because it's just so powerful in this format for whenever the games go longer that allows you to play um, an extra 15 cards and allows you to get them in that one singular game. So as you see here, our sideboard is just going to be filled with 15 one ofs to to be able to kind of go get whatever we need um, with the Mastermind's Acquisition. But for somebody that doesn't play best of one a ton, I play it every now and again whenever we get uh, donations about it. Um, always kind of, it always kind of looks like Esper is like the strongest or one, you know, if not the strongest, definitely one of the top strongest. And this this list looks pretty good. I really like what's going on with this list. The one thing that I don't, that I'm not really sure about, is these Tamios Epiphanies being sorcery speed, not instant speed. Uh, instead of playing something like uh, Chemister's Insight, for example, here, I'm a little worried about that uh, against like other control decks, how like we're having to tap out. Uh, but against non-control decks where you don't mind tapping out, it really does give you really good selection, which could be exactly what you want in the best of one format. Like maybe you just really want that selection there uh, because like finding exactly what you need is so important. Uh, we got 25 lands instead of like 26, which you usually see like 26 lands with like all these four mana cards. But best of one, how they kind of fix your hands, you, you can get away with one less land. So 25 is perfectly reasonable there. So that's what we got. Let's go ahead and, and give this a try and see how it goes here. So we'll play this constructed event here. So with a best of one, we play until we win seven or lose three, whichever comes first. And I think we're going to get like a seven win or at least really close. I'm, I'll be real disappointed if we get under five wins here. Hey, NJO. This deck looks real solid. Thanks for the sub there. Sub number 15 on the day. Yep, looks pretty good. Certainly expecting a lot of mono red. Yeah, you just missed Lesnia Titans. Yeah, I just missed that. Uh, being on the play... Um, ...is real important in best of one. You don't have the extra games. You know, like, if we were playing Gideon this turn and we were about to play Kaya's Wrath the next turn, this game looks so much different than if we're, you know, waiting this whole extra turn. Being on the play is so important. Yeah, it went really well. Selesnia Titans is uploading to YouTube. It'll be up there after a little while. All right, well, let's just play this thing right now. Let me lead the charge into I know it doesn't actually do anything right now. But it can maybe distract our opponent and they attack that instead of attack me. We're going to have to top deck this black source for Kaya's Wrath. It did not distract our opponent. Where, where? 
could have just held up Dovin's Veto, but they didn't need to, like, play their their spell. They could just, you know, do that attack. Um, wait till I go to my turn and see if I, if I have Kaya's Wrath and they just kill me. Yeah, Steamkin's a really hard card to beat on. If you... If they have Steam Kit on the play and you don't remove it, you're going to die. That's just how that is. Ugh, on the draw again. On the draw again. That's what you don't want in the best of one format. No turn two play. Looking good for us. Wow. Well. That... <laughs> That's a deck. Uh. Ah, the Ceratops. Well, I'm just going to bottom all these. That is some... That is quite the dig there. Get to go look at six cards. Take both of these. <laughs> yeah, glad for the epiphany now. Yeah, epiphany looks good. Looks good now. Whenever we have a lot of time and our opponent's not really doing anything. Ooh, gotta kill that. All right, we'll kill that. A little Teferi, another thing. Plan was to play Kefnet with, you know, just play Kefnet, have Dovin's Veto available, but with uh, with this thing that makes their dinosaurs cost a lot less, got to kill that. All right, so this they could have gone with the sail back. Here we go. Epiphany does work really well with Time Raveler, of course. Time Raveler giving it instant speed. So then you don't... Then it's just, like, really good. Yeah, we just never really needed to, to put Teferi down. I thought just getting a lot more cards was more valuable. Casting those Epiphanies and everything. All right, so am I mortifying the drover? Yeah. The problem with mortifying the drover, though, of course, is having removal for these other things. Uh, yep, reveal drown catacomb. I've got time. All right, so I'll epiphany on their turn and. Basically, we get to set up our our Kefnet um, here. So we'll go with this. Oh, that's four more lands at the bottom. So we have eight lands on the bottom. Basically, I was good, planning on putting a removal spell on top, and then we would have revealed the removal spell as our first draw for turn. All right, so we know we have eight lands at the bottom. If y'all don't know me, I just like saying reveal every single time. <laughs> like hitting that reveal button.
Yeah, that's twice to have four lands there. That's not something you see very often. I should bounce this first to see what we are, we're going to do with that mana. Don't worry, I got this. This isn't a fight you can win. Here goes nothing. Oh, sorry. End turn. So there's the bottom of our library. Uh, nine, nine lands and a Dovin's veto are the bottom ten. <laughs> ah, we're still drawing lands. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Trust me, I have a plan. Ooh, we got Settle in here? Good question there, KL, KLZ. What deck do I think is stronger, the Sultai Flash deck or Selesnya Titans? I would probably be more comfortable playing Selesnya Titans right now. They, the Sultai Flash could use a little work. Like if I wanted to play one right now in like the ranked queue. For example. Oh yeah, we got that card. That card's great. I've got it. Yeah, instant speed, enter the God Eternals. Ugh. They're one mana away from Jasath. I think this makes a 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. All right, that'll do it. Right on schedule. Reverse. I feel kind of bad. My opponent's just playing this cool dinosaur deck. They're trying to just do their dinosaur things. This might be a bad idea. There's a bunch of lag there finishing that thing out. But yeah, Kefnet with Tamio's Epiphany. That is certainly pretty good. Plus with Teferi to make that instant speed. That's some real stuff right there. Yeah. That's that's some big game. You play those three in Jeskai? Okay. Gosh, best of one so tough. In best of three, you can, like, keep this and 
you know, hope they're playing like a slower deck and you draw your black mana and like the veto's good and Kefnet's amazing. But with just one game, they just play like a creature on turn one, we're dead. And we don't draw black. All right, glad I'm mulliganed. It's not a blue source, it's going to the bottom. Good mulligan, good mulligan. Yeah, there's a lot of mono red and mono white aggro. And there's a lot of Esper control also. I'd say like those are the, the three popular best of one decks. But definitely like Mono Red and Esper. I think are like the top two. Do we have a turn two res responsive play? Um I guess not. Just like Thought Erasure, Dovin's Veto, that's it. Yeah, like our removal doesn't even start till turn three. And we'll see if we can draw this land so we can have Settle next turn. And be able to save Mortify for after Settle. Yeah, the Selesnya Titans deck was really sweet. Uh, we beat up on control decks. So that is definitely a good sign because of how good and popular control is. But we went 3 0 against Grixis and 1 0 against Esper. Better not play Tights Taker here. Definitely, you know, wanted. Uh, a non-shock land for an untapped land, so it wasn't like super obvious that we have settle like it is, but oh well. It's at least better to have settle than not have settle. So that one's saving Aspirant, this is saving Aurelia. I don't think it makes sense to mortify and just kill, because all we could do is kill the token. We couldn't kill Aurelia because they had the Dauntless Bodyguard on the Aurelia, and then go to three, and then it's going to be really hard for the Settle to do very much. We could, the only thing we can do is represent another set all. It's the only thing we can do.
So getting rid of that, that bodyguard. So now if we draw Kaya's Wrath, we get to clear the board. Not exactly Kaya's Wrath. Or Cleansing Nova. Definitely feels like we were missing turn two interaction here with how we lost to like the mono red, mono white. Um, we had. Like, that's like what our deck can do. We had a turn three removal spell with Oath of Kaya, and then we had Settle on turn four, and then we had another removal on turn five. That just wasn't too close to being good enough. I guess if we would have found another one of our. Like, there's only four sweepers in the deck, and we had one of the four. We can't really ask for another one. Yeah, it definitely seems like we need, like, Moment of Cravings. Or, um, that blue-black one. Uh, I really like the blue-black one. Whatever that one's called. Seems like we need some two-mana interaction in here. Tyrant Scorn. Yeah, thank you. That that one. Tyrant Scorn. I like that one. I'm not sold on the Black Blade. That's, that's got to be really good in Esper Mirrors, but it seems like our a lot of our deck is just good in Esper Mirrors. I think I'd maybe rather have a Tyrant Scorn there. Um... So obviously it's Thought Erasure or Liliana. Those are the only two cards that matter. Uh, I think I'm just going to take Liliana, honestly. If they take one of these cards on my hand, whatever. But Liliana has the ability to just be so much better than that. And it's possible... Yeah, who, who knows how this game's going to go. Obviously I know that they need four land drops to actually cast the Liliana. And they only need one for the Thought Erasure. But... We have four really good cards, and sure, Thought Erasure trades with one, but it doesn't win them the game. Liliana has that ability to win them the game. And this is where, you know, Gideon's definitely going to shine here, but even if this was a Tyrant Scorn, I think we win this game. The biggest weakness I've seen so far with the deck is the being on the draw against the aggro deck. Against the mono red or the mono white. I think that's the biggest thing is like specifically on the draw in those matchups. That's what I'd be really worried about with our deck here. don't like that three mana to fairy. Oh, I shouldn't transform there. I guess it allows me to have Mortify available. But trust me, you'll thank me later. But I was basically thinking of letting, like, waiting one more turn since we 
we're going to be using the extra mana. Wait one more turn and allow us to get one more scry with the Ascanta before flipping. No time for a break. Non-land permanent. Dang. Cannot get the land. Prepare for battle. I'll just activate his Canta since we're going to untap it. We need to move quickly. And as you can tell, I wasn't really even that worried about holding up Dovin's Veto. Gideon is kind of an annoying card to play with like all the clicks to like tick up. It's a it's a little just a little annoying of like the lots of clicks. Alright, two and two. We're on our way to a winning streak. We're just starting. Starting this winning streak. Here we go. We've beaten the the two kind of weirder, slower decks. And lost to mono red and mono white. We're on the draw again. We we are always on the draw. Um, we got cleansing nova. All right, on the draw against red. How how do we do? We at least have Thought Erasure on turn two this time. We didn't have that before. That should help us out. Ooh, love it. They can't play that Frenzy next turn. Very good. That was a great light up the stage for us. Another Frenzy. Yeah, that one's going to have to go. Oh, yeah, I already played my land. Chain Whirler we can take out with this Othakaya. And assume if they just Lightning Strike here to, so they don't waste the Lightning Strike. We don't have to really worry about that Chain Whirler here in a little bit. So really fortunate for us that two Frenzies are now gone. I guess I'm supposed to play the Drown Catacomb there. Didn't need. Didn't need that Dovin's Veto. That's good. And get the Hollow Found in so we can play Cleansing Nova next turn. Hmm. Stop. So can we beat Chain Whirler Shock? Mm. Definitely would have liked the land so we could have had Kefnet plus Veto. But I like Kefnet more than Teferi here. Uh, you know, definitely blocking.
So, how do we win this now? We don't have anything to epiphany into, do we? No, we need to draw like Enter the God Eternals or another Othakaya or something like that. No, there's nothing in the deck. Oh, the next card. The next card. We were one card away. One card away. Dang. One card away. That's unfortunate. Two and three... It's got messed up by the aggro decks. Mono red, mono white. Couldn't handle those. Yeah, it really seems like we need two mana removal in here. Got to have some two mana removal. Um, besides that, like those last two games against mono white and mono red, we we had good hands and we played a lot of things. Like, yeah, we took turn three off that game, but we had turn two Thought Erasure. We took turn three off. And then we had Othakaya on four, and then Cleansing Nova on five. And then we had a Kefnet, but we were dead. Um, and then, you know, like with the Mono White one, too. Being on the draw is just so hard in best of one. Like that game on the play, maybe, you know, good chance we win. Pro you know, like the the one against White, maybe. Just being on, we were on the draw all three times against those aggro decks, and being on the draw without anything to do on turn, without any removal on turn two, is just so rough. Um, Dovin's veto, yeah, it's not good in those matchups. I mean, it's okay. Like once once you stabilize, you're gonna want it for like the the removal, or you're gonna want it for like the uh, for the burn spells at the end. I feel like we have too many... I'm not sure if Dovin's Veto is the problem. I think Gideon could certainly just be a removal spell, a two-mana removal spell. And probably one of the Epiphanies. Like, the Epiphanies are good, but I don't know if you need three to go with Mastermind's Acquisition and Kefnets and Teferi's. Like, we have we have so much of that, that high-end stuff. Yeah, maybe Cry of the Carnaria main deck instead of Cleansing Nova. I could definitely see that. Cleansing Nova just seems so slow at 5 mana. With Mono Red and Mono White being like the, the two aggro decks, having uh, Cry of the Carnarium could be really nice. I don't think more Masterminds. Um... Ravager Worm is better than Hellkite. Hmm. Yeah, that was that was a fun deck to play. Even though we, we ended up losing, um, we had just a lot of close games. You know, like they were good. They were good close games that were interesting and everything. Even though they didn't take a, a super long time, but that's just kind of the best of one format. There. Um. The problem, you know, the problem with Esper, like with Esper, I think you you really want to be anti aggro in best of one and just try to have enough things for the mirror kind of thing. This is definitely an Esper list that's built for the mirror. This is this is an Esper deck that's built to beat Esper and hopes it has enough stuff for aggro. That's basically what we have here. Um, So that's that's kind of like your your choices. Try try to beat Esper or try to beat Red, kind of thing. Um, 
Yeah. Should I cut the Gideon for and Nova for for two cry? Yeah, I w- yeah, I would like cutting the Gideon and the Nova for two cry the Carnarium. I would like that. And then yeah, one and then yeah, it, a Tamiya's Epiphany for for a Scorn. Cuz Scorn Scorn can even even against control Scorn can like save your Kefnet if if you need to. Or if like other Esper decks are playing like Enter the God Eternals, bounce their their token. Yeah, I would like that, man. Yeah, Gideon won that control matchup handily, but I think we were like we could have won without Gideon. But yeah, I mean Gideon was. I mean that opponent wasn't doing anything, but yeah, Gideon is definitely really good against control. But it, that's kind of all Gideon is good against control. Um, but yeah. As as far as sideboard goes, like when we have Masterminds acquisition, I think that you could have I would recommend having like some one mana spells, like that you could for five mana get an acquisition and get. Uh for example, I two spells that I would put in the sideboard if I was playing this deck is I would play one fungal infection. Uh as you know, like that's a that's a card that you can get in like kill kill like an Adanto Vanguard, for example, and you make a one one to block. Uh you know, so so something like you really you want a couple of like really cheap spells so that you can get for like five mana basically. Uh, one fungal infection, and I would have one sky tether, also as as a white, basically removal spell. If you need your if you need that to be, you know, five mana, get rid of a chain whirler, or get rid of a steamkin kind of thing. I'd have one of each of those in there. Or at least one of one of them. At least play a Sky Tether. If, if you know, at least get get a, you know, if you don't want both of them, at least get one. Um, you know, I don't... I don't know which one of these you're you're not really ever getting. There's a lot of these that, that are cards, you know, like like Vona, for example. There's a lot of these that are cards like this Immortal Sun in our deck with tons of planeswalkers. I don't I don't know when we're grabbing a mortal sun instead of something else or there's a lot of these that seem like cards that we're probably not going to grab ever. Like what, like why do we have a mortal sun and elder spell kind of thing? I would get a sky tether in here. Yeah. Gideon giving the Kefnet lifelink just won't happen very often at all. And like, that's, that's like that, that only happens in games that you've like already stabilized that you have those. Um, and that you're able to attack with a lifelink Kefnet. Like, that's just not... Like, as you see with, like, those games that we lose, you're just getting run over, and that's just never going to happen. And so I wouldn't... Because then you... you At that point, you have to attack with Kefnet, and you don't get to play defense with it, with the lifelink. That, that's just not going to happen. How those games work out. All right, so there's Esper Gods, best of one. Um... So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for another video.